You're listening to the LA Football Podcast. What's going on, Los Angeles? Welcome back to the LA Football Show right here on the LA Football Network and live on the Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio. This is your Trojans huddle as we talk all things USC concurrent as we are recording you have the usc trojans basketball team taking on michigan state hopefully we can eke out a win here and move into the second round of the ncaa tournament happy st patrick's day everyone uh we are now in our fourth segment of radio haven't said that yet um but happy st patrick's everyone out there um even if you're not irish pretty much everyone out there celebrates in america um i know you don't drink them all but maybe you'll uh in spirit, have a, a green beer or maybe just a, a green Kool-Aid or something in that form. But uh, how are we doing? Uh, excited to talk Trojan with you, but um, happy Friday to you, my friend, and glad to be back uh, after the break with you. Absolutely, brother. It's great to be here. It's happy Friday. It's St. Patrick's Day. We're going into the weekend and talking the men of Troy. So what better way to kick off the weekend? Yeah. I know I always love on St. Patrick's Day. It's like everyone has – somehow finds a little small percentage of Irish in them. Every Cinco de Mayo, everyone's got a little bit of Mexican in them. Um, All those, uh, you know, I I don't see anyone celebrating on Leif Erikson Day, all their Norwegian heritage, but, you know, I I try to hold down the fort for everyone on Leif Erikson Day. But, um, but yeah, uh, excited to talk a little Trojans and uh, get into kind of this off season. We got Pro Day coming up here next week. Um, I should be at that, so excited to see you know, the likes of, you know, Addison and Tui Chipolotu and all those guys out there uh, for the last time kind of before truly into just the draft season in terms of speculation and rumors and all that fun stuff. So show is always brought to you by our friends at Bet Online. Head to betonline.ag today. Use our promo code BELIEVE, that's B-L-E-A-V, gets you a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. That is free money. Put in 50 bucks, you get 25 free dollars to play with. Hopefully you can bet on the tourney here, have some fun, win some money. Um, as we go through March Madness. So, Jamal, to start with, USC, Caleb Williams, in, I mean, pure celebrity. He might be the biggest celebrity in LA in terms of athletes. I, I, we've talked about it before. Like, is he, and I, I think I did a show um, by myself once where I talked about, is he the biggest celebrity QB in LA right now? And that includes Matthew Stafford and Justin Herbert, just based on persona, based on accolades, based on, you know, what he's brought to LA, based on what he's brought USC back from. And so I think back to my good friend, Frosty Rucker, in those teams when you were in college there, the, you know, the 03, 04, 05, 06, all those years. And I talked to Frosty a lot and he was like, dude, it was, we were literally celebrities in the city. Like any, any party we wanted to go to, um, any club we wanted to go to, any event we wanted to go to, we had celebrities coming to our practices. We had comedians talking at our Friday night dinners and, and that was USC football. Obviously times have changed. Obviously the, the USC program had been down for quite a while, but it feels like we're getting back to that point. Your thoughts on the celebrity that is USC football. Yeah. I mean, Ryan, it is, it is Hollywood and USC is really known for kind of three things above all else. It's, it's football, it's, it's fraternities, um, you know, and it's, it's sort of the, the Trojan family, right? I mean, those, and Phil, you know, those are the, the three or four Fs of USC in, in a nutshell. And I was there at the peak, uh, you know, I, I was class of 06. And so it was, you know, 48 and four in my four years there. The, the Vince Young game was my last game uh, as an undergrad. And so it had, had, USC won that game. They would have been the greatest four-year run in the history of college football. And so we still mourn that loss um, the way we, you know, you would mourn a loved one 20 years later. And so, uh, you know, everything about USC is, is sort of Hollywood and that's kind of the ethos. Everyone kind of forgets the first real, you know, athlete on the football team that had this sort of crossover connection with Hollywood was John Wayne, the Duke. And so that, that connection, even to the silent era of film, that goes back in the twenties and thirties is what makes USC USC. That is the ethos. And that, that was the peak. I don't think anything will ever top that 03, 04, 05 run because you had Pete who was so pro openness um, for better or for worse. And, you know, you had Snoop Dogg and Will Ferrell and you had all these guys at the practices and 
Leinert and Bush were just such kind of iconic personalities as well. I mean, it was at a point where Leinert was dating Paris Hilton and, and Bush was dating Kim Kardashian. Everyone sort of forgets that in the peak. And then when you sort of juxtapose the fact that it was a 34-game winning streak, when you add to it, it was right after Shaq left the Lakers. And the Lakers had these sort of down years before Pau Gasol showed up. It was right during the time of the McCourt era with the Dodgers. And the McCourts were going through all of this dark days. The litigation of ownership and what have you. The Dodgers were kind of a non-starter. The Clippers were really never a starter to begin with. And then there was no pro football. There was no Rams. There was no Chargers. So USC was everything uh, to to the city of LA. USC was the pro team to LA uh, in those years. And so Leinart and Bush and Lendale and those guys were all essentially our pro stars. So to me, nothing is really going to ever match that because the combination of just swagger and championships, but also the landscape of LA sports being so different. Now we got the Rams, we have the Chargers, LeBron is a Laker, the, the Clippers have new ownership with Balmer and have stars with Paul George and Kawhi Leonard and a new Intuit Dome. You've got, you know, UCLA basketball coming back, you know, maybe another final four year this year after one, two years ago. You've got all of these other things, LAFC, the Galaxy. So even when SC is, is great, it's never going to be that because the, the just the, the ecosystem of LA sports is very different. Having said that, this is, I think, the most iconic USC-like star the Trojans yeah. have had in Caleb Williams since Leinart and Bush uh, almost 20 years ago now. Yeah, no, absolutely. I, I totally agree. We'll never get back to that story of celebrity from those days. And, you know, I moved here in 08, so I wasn't here um, during, I guess, those. I mean, it was still kind of peak years in 08, but not quite as peak as, you know, 03 to 06. Um, but at the time, obviously, no pro teams. USC still was – it was it wasn't just – the sports team in this town uh but it was it was a culture too kind of like how the raiders have like raider nation uh usc was that in la and the raiders obviously had had that in la and still have that in la to an extent um but sc was the the equivalent in terms of culture but also they were actually in la like they were the la team so it, you had that bond um from sport and then also culture all in one and so I think to that level, it's getting back to. It'll never be the same entertainment celebrity that it was as everything you just said. I don't need to reiterate it because it's so factual. Um, and especially with the sports ecosystem in L.A., what it is now and and the greatness that we've seen in the Dodgers winning the World Series, the Lakers winning an NBA championship, the Rams winning the Super Bowl. Um, and so there's the Kings are, are good again, and they're the two seed in the West right now in hockey. And LAFC just won the MLS World, uh, the MLS Cup just last year and, and are going to be great again this year. So there's so much more competition in terms of peak sport in the city. But the culture, I think, is coming back to what it was. And it's only been one year. But just in that short year, Jamal, seeing kind of the excitement around this team, the pride in this team. And, you know, and let's be real. You know, people will point to outside people will point to, well, the stadium still was, you know, 70,000. It wasn't sold out like it wasn't the full 80,000 sellout. And, you know, I get that. But I think when you look at it from a a context of this was the first year of this regime of building what had been kind of rotting for the last five or six years. And then when you take out the context of, yes, you got to sell at the stadium every to get to that level of USC is fully back. They're embraced by the city culture. But when you live here, like you and I do, and you are out in the streets, out at restaurants, out at bars, like I saw so many more SC jerseys, SC shirts coming back out, SC license plates, all that stuff out in just the ecosystem of life. And yes, the stadium will continue to sell out and, and grow and grow and grow as these years go on. But I think that's what is back as you see that, Jamal. And I'm sure you saw it. I know you're, I won't say technically where you are on, on this segment of the show. Um, but depending where you are within L.A., uh, the Trojans are, are loud and strong and back. And, and Caleb and Lincoln are, are the, the root of that, of course. No doubt, Brian. And, and, you know, there's a deeper element there in that. Football is everything to USC. It's the thing that ties alumni together. It's the thing that really makes the Trojan family the Trojan family. Without football, without that connective tissue, without that glue, it's hard to sort of have that community. It's the one thing that we can all talk about. You know, sports has this very 
special dimension that I don't think any other human experience really has, where it's the one topic where you could be going in an elevator in a Fortune 20 company and the CEO and the janitor could talk sports. Like there's, that's the only thing when you sort of think about, um, you know, socioeconomic differences, religious differences, political differences, ethnic differences, geographic differences, you know, the one thing that can sort of bind us together is sports and no sort of, uh, you know, institution sort of embodies that as much as football does for what the USC Trojan family is. And I completely agree with you, Ryan, for USC to really be USC. And you talked about that, you know, there's a USC-ness, you're kind of a USC person or you're not, you know, and, and it's, there is some swag and there is some wealth associated with that. And there is a little bit of exclusivity associated with that. And, and that has a tendency to sort of rub people really the wrong way and really hits at the nerve of a lot of elements of the human condition. But, you know, that's kind of also what sort of feeds into the myth a little bit and also kind of make it, A, it makes the bond stronger when you're inside it and it makes the hate louder when you're outside it. It's much of the same way, you know, the University of Miami, for instance, down in, in Florida. So having said all of that, I think Lincoln and Caleb are, are really the guys that are, are sort of leading the charge back and you're starting to see USC becoming a brand again, which is why I think this year is so critical. You know, this is the final year for Caleb. This is now year two of Lincoln. How do you build on this and get into the CFP? Because if you flatline it a little bit, and if you sort of not don't win the Pac-12 and you kind of have a similar like 10, 11 wins, but not really threatening for the title, I think that right now it's still delicate. This Everyone's kind of coming back and, you know, but they're like, well, do we have something or do we not? We, we really think we have something. I think the way last season ended now is kind of, added a little bit of doubt um, to, to all of that confidence coupled with, you know, sort of some glaring deficiencies on defense. So everyone is sort of cautiously optimistic right now. This is the year where you have to sort of break through that, solidify that. And now you, you have the makings of a four five, six year run much in the way you did in the mid two thousands. If you don't kind of deliver now, Lincoln almost has to kind of go back to the drawing board a little bit year three with a new quarterback, with a Malachi Nelson, and, and you know, have to need to reestablish. And c- couple that with this being the last year of the Pac-12 for USC, a conference that they have owned, that they have dominated for its entire history, you want to go out with a championship. You don't want to say, hey, my last 15 years in the conference, I won it once, you know, and, and now I'm in, in the Big Ten, where then you have to really kind of start over. So pivotal year. It's one of those years where I would argue or maybe one of the three most important seasons in the history of USC football in terms of where they want to try and get to. Yeah, no, I totally agree. So um, looking, circling back to uh, the program within the city and, and the culture, you know, I saw a poll or a graphic recently, and I'm going to be honest, I don't remember who did it or how accurate or like if it was like, a number of students were polled. If it was like one person went to each game and decided. So I, I have no idea. I, I'm sorry. It's not a, probably not a lot of credibility, but just for a talking reference. So I graphic out there that ranked the all 12 pack 12 uh, football programs in terms of game day experience. And USC came a dead last at 12. Now I don't necessarily know if I agree with that, but based on that, like if I'm asking you, Jamal, you went there, you're an alumni yeah. there, you were at, you're at every single game, I'm at every single game now, but more from a media perspective, what can SC do to make the game day experience better? Because I think it's it's very different in the fact that it is in the heart of LA, the stadium is basically on campus, which is you know very different from some of the other California schools, most certainly obviously UCLA with having to trek to the Rose Bowl. Um, you have the skyline in the background, you have the Natural History Museum right there, you have obviously you know, the campus stuff going on, but what can they do in your opinion? And this is maybe not a fair question because I'm putting on the spot, but to make that game day experience um, even better and entice Angelinos and maybe non alumni that were just football fans to go to these games and make that game day experience better. Yeah, Ryan, I think it's a great question. And I I agree. I mean, it, you know, the, the, the knock on SC for the years has always been kind of its location, right? I mean, that's kind of the elephant in the room and, and, and no knock to, to downtown in any way shape or form but you know it's it's not you know it, it's rough around the edges for sure and it's also not a very easy place to 
get around and park and there's one way streets and, you know, you sort of miss your turn and, you know, you, you lose the next 25 to 30 minutes and, and it can yeah. be kind of crowded, crowded and congested and it's hard. And when you sort of <clears throat> juxtapose that with the beautiful mountains of Boulder and, you know, the, the lake view uh, of Seattle and even, you know, the, the San Gabriel mountains uh, for, for UCLA and all that space on the golf course, it is not the most aesthetically pleasing experience. I mean, we, we have to sort of acknowledge that. I think as alumni, I love to go back on campus and, you know, hang out with my college buddies and, you know, do a, do sort of a, a game day party on campus and all of that. But those things are a little bit kind of fewer and further between in terms of pockets of experience. I think USC has to sort of lean into what their identity really is. And it's, it's really at the intersection of entertainment and sports. And secondly, kind of take a page out of something like the Century City Mall, which is sort of the one mall that has sort of survived and thrived in this new era of online shopping because they've turned it into an experience. And so I think what you have to do is you got to create shows. You got to create entertainment, you know, get musicians out there, get, you know, comedy routines out there. Get dancers out there, you know, alumni, you know, folks that are kind of aspiring to be in Hollywood, folks that are, you know, already in Hollywood and turn it into kind of a show. And, you know, you go there for the show for an hour or two or three or, or you interleave it in some way. And then you sort of break apart, have your hot dogs, have your hamburgers, have your beer, get on campus, maybe do a little campus shopping, come back for another show and then head on up, you know, to the game and almost kind of turn it into, um, you know, some some other sort of indoor, outdoor kind of concert type experiences. I think that's what I would do uh, if I was if I was sort of the head of athletics of USC, because you're not going to compete pound for pound on game day experience. You just don't have the location, you know, yeah. flat out. You, you can't you can't turn downtown into Boulder, Colorado or Seattle, Washington or Old Town Pasadena. I mean, you know, that that may never happen in our lifetime. So you have to be able to lean into what are the knobs that I can actually turn. And the thing that USC does, you know, they're the entertainment school. So bring the entertainment back to the game day experience. Yeah, I think that's kind of the only option, at least at this point, without investing a ton of money in infrastructure and, and changing parking and rerouting and stuff like that. Um, Because, yeah, I mean, as great as the call is and as great as the backdrop is, it is, you know, it's not a college town environment even though it's right on campus and the campus life at usc is great i mean you've talked about it i've been there when i was in college like the campus life the parties the fre- the greek life is all is all very very top notch but on a game day you don't have that, that college vibe like a eugene like a boulder you mentioned um and 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 so you don't necessarily have it is like a disconnect if you will just because you're in a second largest city in America and the stadiums are right there, which is great in some aspects, but it makes that disconnect of that college vibe and others. So I think, yeah, you just lean into the, you know, we're, we're going to make this like a pro game experience. We're going to make it like a game at SoFi where it's just, you know, we have the entertainment, we have the value. Uh, we bring in celebrities, whatever that may be. We make sure we really expose our alumni um, tailgates. I know I've talked to Frosty about that, where they do have some alumni tailgates, but just growing that in terms of seeing all the former players there, and they have the the setup outside the Cali uh, where all the alumni are, and then having you know just different pockets of current student athletes, current students, and former students, and then just non students, someone like me, where I can go and feel welcome, and is and I know I think what's hard, Jamal, that I've experienced. And this is this can be with a lot of other areas too. But I know when I've gone to, like Boulder, for instance, you can just walk down to the hill yeah. on Boulder and just see everyone. Okay, I'm just gonna go walk up to this tailgate of this. And I see it's like okay, I have no idea where to go because everything's fenced off because it's like one parking lot here. There's the museum area here. There's the on-campus stuff here. So I think just some more. And I don't know how they would do that but more direction on like, where's the areas to go? Like when you're tailgating, you go on campus, right? Like that's the spot yes. where like students go. Yep, yeah, yep, absolutely. So just having that knowledge, I think would help. You can't just like show up in an Uber, like other game days and be like, okay, there's where I go. It's like, there you show up and you're like, I don't know where I'm going. I guess I'll just go to the stadium yeah. and, and see what I can find. <laughs> so yeah, I think no, there's so much opportunity. For the, for that, alums, that spot on. I mean, you know, for the alums, it's sort of, Hey, let's, 
let's see, maybe the alumni association tailgate or one of your, you know, Marshall school, the Turby, whatever, you know, is having a tailgate or you're going to go to rock and rules in the village and, you know, uh, watch some games. You got your buddies, you, you know, you're having some drinks and all of that. And so it's very pleasant in that regard, but the fact that it is, and, and also Ryan, I think there's sort of a haves and a have nots that USC has got to fix. Cause it's sort of like the tailgating on campus versus the tailgating off campus. And it's almost kind of like, well, it, you know, this is for the alums versus this is just for the fans. And I think it's, they've got to be more inclusive. Yeah, absolutely. So let us know your thoughts. We'd love to hear from you Trojan fans. Text us, text Trojans to 31032. How can we better the, the game day tailgate experience? Because we are LF, LAFB. We are the center of LA football. And any way we can help and be involved, that is our goal to make a bigger community, bigger Trojans community, and have more fun. So that's all the time we got. Love the direction this program's going. Obviously, Lincoln and Caleb have started it, and then we want to continue it here as building our community. So thank you all for tuning in. Thanks for everyone on radio. Everyone have a blessed weekend. As we're recording, SC is uh, down nine right now. So you need a little comeback in this game against Michigan State. Hopefully, we can port back with a win. But thank you all. For Jamal Madden, I'm Ryan Dyrett. Talk to you guys all soon. You're listening to the L.A. Football Podcast.